Hey friends, welcome to the next episode of Conversations with Parents Who Write. I am joined by Iris Imaginoria. Iris is the creator of the Imaginorium Academy, a story-based theater camp for kids ages two, eight through 14. It would be amazing if it was for ages two and up, but <laughs> two for ages eight through 14, where she teaches classes in acting, writing, stagecraft, mythology, pop culture, LGBTQ identity, and I'm gonna say this right, metamorph magic special effects makeup. Wow. Um, she also teaches performing arts and writing at a middle school in Providence, Rhode Island, and she teaches through an online platform called OutSchool After School. Lots of teaching. Her debut name, her debut novel, Imagine the Key, is essentially a middle grade fictional memoir as it borrows from Iris's life story because real life can be stranger than fiction. In this book, which is the first of a new series, a young girl finds a magical key in a library book that lets her walk between worlds, out of her home and into mythical lands of imagination. I always dreamed of this concept as a kid, how many times I wanted to find a key to be able to go in a book, 100%. So I, I just love that concept. On a more personal level, Iris is a survivor many times over, including experiences with cancer and mental health. She hopes that by sharing some of her very real experiences, she can make a difference in the lives of others. Um, her experiences as a parent of a 14 year old gender fluid teen greatly informs her writing. She also identifies as both bisexual and as having invisible disabilities and hopes there can be more books to include marginalized voices for middle graders. Iris has also published a collection of plays and she recently released an additional play. So Iris, is here and I am going to send her an invite and I'm gonna and I am going to bring her into the show now yay the magic worked Ooh. it did <laughs> the magic worked I love it I love yeah. it and how I are you doing I am doing well I am doing well this is just so wonderful this whole thing that you're doing here in uh, being able to talk to the parents who write. I, I think it's wonderful. Um, and it's so exciting. I've wanted to be able to, um, to get my voice out there in some other ways. And this is the first chance I've had to do this sort of thing. And so I'm really excited. And I also have my cat here. Um, he's going to be a major character in the next novel, actually. Um, our, one of our, the Christmas play we did was actually called The Catastrophe, and it had 42 characters, the largest cast I've ever done. I invited all of our students to tell me about their cats, both living and past cats that they had had, and I brought all of their cats as characters into the plays. And so I ended up with 42 characters, which was insane. But the story was about um, a spell that had gone wrong and made copycats. Um, and so ultimately the spell made 4,200 cats. Um, and and oh, you really need a bigger litter box at that point. Um, and that is going to be the second novel. Um, I, I'm working on this, that novel right now, but it's the narrator is actually me um, going back and forth in time. And so my cat, who in the novel is called Mr. Fuzzy Pants, he is a character in, he's a character in the play and he's a character in the novel. Um, and he, he has quite an opinion about the world. <laughs> and, um, I just wanted to say real quick, thank you so much for what you said when you came in about about this platform that I'm trying to create. So just a big, a big thank you. I think mm -hmm. that I, being a parent is really hard. 
and being a writer is really hard and being a being a person is really hard <laughs> i mean all of it life is hard and be being a woman is really hard and uh, all of it and we do it and we get up each day and sometimes if you can get to the end of the day and you're just still breathing you know and and the kids are still alive and and you just got through another day you've done something really really great yeah and that that is just that is success you know yeah. And so, so what if I have put thousands of hours into a book and I have made $45? Okay. So what? <laughs> it, that, that's okay. Because yeah. that's success. Um, and I have a room full of costumes and I play dress up for a living. Yeah. Because, because that's what I love and that's success you know that was one of the uh first lessons that i got in my coaching program that i did last year and it was helping us to really figure out what success means for us because you get these outside influences of what success means right like oh i'm not successful unless i hit these numbers make this amount of money or reach this number of people and and really when i took that program i realized that my success is reaching just one more person mm -hmm. just Absolutely. one more person if i can get one more person to hear our stories and pick up a pen and believe I, that she can write her story, whether it's memoir, whether it's flash fiction, whether it's creative writing, whether it's a personal essay, whether it's a journal entry. I was voted I most likely it. to succeed in high school. And for a long time, I felt like it was like a Damocles, like it was a weight around my neck because I am not traditionally successful. I'm according to like fortune 500, whatever, I'm not, right. I'm not what most people would consider successful. Right. Um, I have a PhD in theater. <laughs> I have a mortgage worth of student loans that I will probably never pay off. Um, I have gone through this really crooked road of career that doesn't really make sense to most people um but i make a big difference in a few people's lives all the time that's huge that is and huge being able to make a difference in even just one person's life and this summer i have six kids in my camp is the smallest camp I've ever had. And those six kids are going to have a heck of a time. Mm. You know? That's awesome. Because I'm still doing it for those six kids. Because it's worth it. Oh, it's yeah. worth moving 40 boxes of supplies and writing a whole new play and doing the whole thing for those six kids. It's worth it. They're worth it. It would be worth it for one kid. Oh yeah. I oh, would no. do it for one kid. Yeah. And so I, I can't really afford it. I'm not really making money from it. It's no longer considered a business at this point. It's really considered a hobby. Um, but it's important. And, and you're following your passion. You're following and, your passion and you're inspiring others and you're, you're helping people to feel comfortable and believe in themselves. I mean, that's priceless. 
and I'm building. I'm still building this world. The world is still growing, and it's it's going to be something more. I believe in it. You know, someday. Well, I used to do Harry Potter camps, and I had 250 people. And someday people will know what an Iris Imaginaria camp is. And I'll have more than six people. There you go. You know. But it, we had a, a couple of hits in a row with COVID and with um, the loss of our source material due to, um, due to some, due, due to a disagreement with an author. Um, oh, yes. Yes, I have definitely seen that. I know exactly what you're talking about. And that would make perfect sense why you would decide to distance yourself from that. Which... It kind of changed our, our world a lot. Um, I mean, like, like I said, I, I have, well, I don't know. I think you said I have a transgender son. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's there our gender fluid son. He's, calling, he's gender fluid now. He, he was calling himself transgender for a while. Now he's gender fluid. Mm -hmm. um, it's all under the same umbrella, um, but it changed our magical world quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and and I don't want to say negative things, um, but it's difficult when you lose your heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And it's hard to be um, strong for your kids, too. But, yeah. I... but we, keep, we keep going. That's what I think these last couple of years have been for a lot of parents, is figuring out how to keep going under really hard circumstances. Yeah. I mean, we, I see so many parents just figuring it out under really hard circumstances. And now I am, I just started this job in a public school. And so I'm going into um, every, every day I'm going to see kids who are in much worse situations than we are. Wow. So, and a lot of them have very little creativity in their lives and don't think that they can be creative and it's my job to help bring the creativity out of them and i, I was only there for about six weeks in the spring um that was really challenging and it's going to be interesting to see how it's different in the fall um bringing yeah. drama into a inner city public school is it's interesting. <laughs> I think that is such an amazing gift that you're able to provide because creativity, for me at least, creativity is, is what helps me to find the butt house. Creativity is what helps me to open up my mind. And even though I may be stuck in a really hard place, I will fight my way out of it. I use my creativity to find hope inside me, inspiration. You know, I can start writing about something that I am depressed about or struggling with, and I feel completely hopeless when I start writing it. But when I see the words hit the page and I get the gunk out of me, then I start to realize it's actually not that bad. And then I can start to find solutions and I find, I don't know, it's like this intrinsic hope that just all of a sudden comes back out onto the page. But I don't feel that hope until I get it onto the page. Like, cause like, and the gunk was stuck in me. I had to get that part out first before I could find I think forward. about the few weird and interesting teachers I had when I was in middle school, too, because there there were only a few, but there were a few interesting teachers. 
along the way that made a huge difference in my life. And they were the real catalysts to make me into this person <laughs> that I am. You know, I, I can't remember if I had any with blue hair, but I there had to have been some that, that there were at least a few that were the ones that introduced me to drama and introduced me to writing and introduced me to books. And I get to be that person for some of these kids. And how cool is that? So cool. I get to be the, the person in, in color and in that, that brings, uh, I did this whole project based on paintings where I, I put up these, I have all these tapestries and I put up all these tapestries and I had them write stories where they were supposed to go into paintings and what would happen if you woke up in the starry night. And someday these kids are going to like see these paintings 10 years from now and they're going to be like, who was that weird teacher I had in middle school who made me look at that painting and <laughs> they're going to think about that someday and yeah I love that they're not gonna yeah. remember my name they don't didn't know my name then they just called me miss they called everybody miss but but they're gonna remember the painting they're gonna remember that they did that they imagined something and that they had thoughts that were outside of themselves outside of their everyday reality mm -hmm. yeah if I, if I can give that to one kid I did my job yeah they'll remember the teacher who showed them that it's okay to be ourselves mm -hmm. and embrace that Ab absolutely so it it's worth the hard stuff if I can keep them from killing each other at the same time that would be really really good that's harder than it sounds. Uh, that was the hardest part of the job is keeping them from killing each other. But uh, anyway. Yeah. Teachers, man, you, you guys are heroes. That's for certain. Mm. I'm curious, can you share with us specifically what it is that you absolutely love about writing? I love that... I can go anywhere. I mean, really, I can just follow a thought and then like go down that trail. Like I can say, oh, I have a gummy bear. I'm going to make the gummy bear into a character. Now I'm going to make that character into this other thing. And now it's going to suddenly become, I, I mean, it could really just be anything and it becomes some other thing i i love how random things can become total other things i love that writing can writing i love how many different types of writing can become things i as a dramatist I love that I can write something on a page and then see it on a stage. <laughs> that is just beyond cool. I mean, it, it really, really is amazing to see my work actually acted out. Um, it's, it's really, really fun to bring it into reality. Um, and what we do with the camps is just so, so much fun because it's, we, we bring it to life. Um, I, it's, it's another step beyond just regular writing. Um, I, I write on so many different levels. I didn't ever really expect to write novels originally, but I was teaching writing. I was teaching memoir writing in high school. Um, and I was, I was doing this camp where I had 
been playing this character for 15 years at that point. And I wrote the play about how the camp had started. And my student said, that's a really cool story. I want to know more about that story. And I, I thought, hmm, maybe I should try writing the memoir of my character. I, and so I decided to try to do NaNoWriMo as my character. I, I just thought, I'll just see how this goes. It, it was just kind of a, I'm just going to try this. Um, since I taught memoir writing and I had been the character for so long and I had this story that was the background story of how the school started. And then, you know, the whole kill your darlings thing, originally the story was how the school started. I ended up taking that part out of, out of Imagine the Key. So Imagine the Key doesn't have the school starting anymore. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It no longer gets that far. We haven't gotten to the school starting yet. Um, so that's not going to happen for a couple of years, at least. So, um, <laughs> yeah, which is just, it's really funny. Um, I know, I know when that's going to happen in the storyline, but it's not yet. Um, we're not, we're not there yet. Um, so. <laughs> I am curious, has your 14 year old read your book? Oh yes. Oh yes. He, and what he is has read it. Well, he's had me read it out loud actually, uh. because he, he likes audio books better though. Mm -hmm. I haven't finished the audio book yet, but he, he has heard me read it to him. I am actually recording the audio book. Um, I'm about halfway done recording the audiobook. It's a lot of work recording the audiobooks, but the, just the actual process of recording audiobooks is a lot of work. But he, he really likes it a lot. He's a little bit um, iffy on the actual storyline of uh, things that haven't happened yet in the storyline storyline. But, um, but he really does like it a lot, actually. Um, he argues with me on some point sometimes um <laughs> but he has his own he's a writer too and he has his own whole thing that he's doing like he's got his own it's somewhat like fan fiction only not it's like this whole other he's gone off in this whole other thing um like he he created this whole role-playing game in in universe that he ran um, a couple of years ago that then I, I asked if I could do his role playing game as a class. And then he was like, well, I don't like it anymore if you're going to do it. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, and then he did the, he colored the illustrations in the color version of the book. So I wow. say that it's my favorite, his best coloring book ever. Um, he, he's an incredible artist. Um, mm. My, 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 my cosmos. So um, I, I bought the illustrations from a company that does really beautiful illustrations, but then he did all of the coloration of them. So like, I mean, really professionally professional I, grade illustrations i love writing. how you guys are able Lovely. to use writing as a connection point but also that you can then make your imagination this thing that you're creating it's it's a joint project in that sense and that's absolutely beautiful to make him feel a part of that and oh that is amazing dragon <laughs> yeah isn't that amazing wow I, I just, I love the fact that you guys can do that together and share that. He was like, but they should be color. It's a color world. And I'm like, but the color is expensive. And he's like, I can do it and procreate. And I'm like, well, <laughs> then do it. And, and he's like, well, I'm gonna. And <laughs> <laughs> that 
that's really that's pretty funny <laughs> and, and it takes a month longer for the color book to come to anyone who orders the color book and so nobody orders the color book because it uh -huh. takes too long. and so <laughs> we we did sell a number of the color ones at pride though we had a booth oh. at the pride festival and we had them in person and so we sold a number of them at the Pride Festival because we had them there and they could buy them right then. Yeah. And when they were available right then and we also had run out of paperbacks, that also, I think, was a factor. <laughs> well, hey, that's a huge success. You know, Congratulations. Run, run out of paperbacks and only have the color ones available. The, those are two um, factors in people spending a lot more money on the hardbacks. But right. The hardbacks cost way too much and oh. um, take a month longer to come. Um, right. But but they're beautiful. And so that's why I made the color collector's edition, even though it's stupidly expensive Amazon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I learned a lot about like what to do and what not to do. And I don't know. Uh, next time I will probably still do things all wrong but um <laughs> you know i have a question <clears throat> yes. i have a question what do you wish you had known before you went into publishing your book um well i it's funny because i i did this beautiful wonderful conference the women in publishing conference right after i published and i learned all this stuff that i did wrong and I, I did so much stuff wrong. Um, like I, I did so much stuff wrong about, um, I didn't have enough, um, advanced readers. I still don't have enough, um, reviews. I still don't have enough reviews. Uh, so it still like is barely on anybody's radar because it doesn't have enough reviews. Um, I should not have published the um, hardcover through Amazon. I should have published it through Ingram, even though Ingram gave me like a really hard time. I had some some difficulty with it. And so I, I gave up on Ingram and published the hardcover through Amazon. And I shouldn't have, but I did. And now I feel stuck with it there. And there's something I could do about it, but I don't have time to deal with it. And, um, and I don't have the money now to go back and do that. And I feel kind of stuck with it right now because it's already published there. I feel kind of stuck because I'm only published through Amazon and there are places who don't want a book if it's only published through Amazon. Really? But, yeah. Yeah. There are places who won't carry it because it's published only published through Amazon um, and yet that it's it's I have this very beautiful book that there are people I have people in my class who won't buy it because it's only published through Amazon um, I, I have people who have told me they won't buy it because it's published through Amazon because they don't like Amazon because it's a corporation they don't like Wow. Um, sorry, that's where it's published. Um, I, I can't fix that right now. I, I don't have the energy. I don't have the spoons. Um, so I have a question. Um, <laughs> cause I totally get the whole, I feel stuck right now. And whenever I feel stuck, I try to <sighs> grieve what I can't change and then be like, okay, what, what can I work on? Right. So mm -hmm. what would your next step then be to I, get more I know readers, there are like three readers for reviews? It. Wait, sorry. But, the audio the audio has a hard time if we talk over each other. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to finish my question real quick. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so do you, uh, oh, right. So I was asking, uh, like, what, what would be the next thing that you could do to help get the word out there more? Would you focus on getting more readers or would you focus on um, uh, 
social media engagement to help put the word out that way? Like, I'm, I'm curious just what you're thinking on how to- The thing that the I've been told is I need to focus on getting the sequels written first, oh. because for a book that is a series, until I have the next couple of books, until I have at least three books, people aren't real, they, getting as much publicity isn't, I'm not going to have read through until I have the next couple of books anyway. Interesting. Because as amazing of a book as it is, and it is, trust me, it's an amazing book. Um, <laughs> once they see that it is the first in a series, they're going to wait to buy it until the second and third books are available. A lot of okay. people. Because people okay. are like, well, I don't want to wait. I don't want to have to read the first book and be waiting for the second book. And um, because that's how people's brains work. We, we live in such a instant gratification society. People want to be able to binge their books. And so the most important thing for me to do is work on <laughs> the second book. That, that's what I've been told. That's the, the biggest advice that I have gotten in is work on getting more books out. Um, so, so where are you? Where are I, you with book, uh, with book two? I, I am working on it. <laughs> I've, I've gotten some chapters written. Um, okay. And I, and since, I mean, I do have more because I did write the, the new plays. So I have more credits under my name now because I've got the plays. And I'm going, uh, it, it was really fun putting out the one new play I realized. You know, I have the, the six, these are six plays, but there's six plays in one. I could put all six of them as six individual plays as well. That's mm -hmm. probably a good idea. So I think I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to put those all out individually too. Mm. And so I'm just kind of looking at different possible ways that I can put things out. And I'm also thinking about putting them out on Teachers Pay Teachers for mm. teachers to be able to do with their classes. And just some different ways of getting these things out into the world um, while working on getting that second book done. Nice. Um, How many? And, and while trying to get ready for the, the fall, um, for, for trying to be a little more prepared than I was jumping into the classroom in the spring when I was really not in any way prepared for what I walked into in that class. Um, so that that's my game plan right now um okay. is to to focus on getting getting the plays out in more directions and um getting the sequel written i want to get the sequel out by christmas ooh fun it, which it has some christmas themes too so that would be oh. even better uh, because it was originally the christmas play last year so it has some Christmassy stuff in it. So that would make it even better for it to come out by Christmas. If it could come Do out you... between Halloween and Christmas, it would be perfect. Yeah. Do you have a daily uh, word count that you aim for with your stories? Or do you, like, what, how do you, you know, the question that, my gosh, most people ask, especially parents, most parents ask, is how do you make time to write? So how do you make time to write? <laughs> My time to write happens best if I can do it um, before anybody else wakes up. That is my best time. Um, I, I just, I, it's like that, that magic time of nobody else. It's like, no one else is going to disturb my brain in this 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 little um but then it, if someone else is awake then then everything else kind of falls apart i don't always get that of course 
Um, I rarely get that. Um, sometimes. How, how much time do you allow for in the morning? Like, um, do you aim for half hour, an hour? Or is it like, if I can even get 10 minutes in, score? Even, 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 even 10 minutes, even uh, anything, you know? And it really just, and I, I, I jump around too. I don't always even, I don't always go in order. I don't always, I mean, of course I'm right about time travel, you know, <laughs> so I, it doesn't always have to be even working on the same project. You know, sometimes I, and I know some people can't work that way, but I almost have to. Um, I, I can go from here and I write on my phone. I write while still in bed. I write a lot on my phone. Um, but I, I have to, um, and that's so much of what I've done has been on my phone. Um, it's that in between space. It's just that that's when I can get something and, um, some, and sometimes it, sometimes it's at night. <laughs> it's just the time when, whenever or sometimes we'll have a conversation and I hear the words are interesting and I'm like, oh, I need to go write that down. Um, we just had a conversation yesterday about the, the sky and whether the, the, something was in the sky. No, you tricked me. The sky wasn't really there. And, uh, and it was just such an interesting conversation and I had to go write it down because I knew it was going to go into something. Um, you know, and um, I have ridiculous amounts of notes on my phone that I know are ultimately going to go into something because. Oh, yeah. That's the note. What the, the, it, it's just that's the way it goes. And I um, definitely have tons of notes on my phone, but thanks to Google Docs. I, yeah. if I know where it's going to go in my story, I can at least get into my story and plop it relatively where I think it's going to go. I, I but I, I was going to use, um, what was the Scrivener? I thought that that was going to work for me, but that didn't work for me. I, I stuck with Google Docs. Google Docs is more, I do, I use notes in Google Docs. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I was up way too late at night. It was like 1130. I just really wanted to go to bed. It had been a long week of being up even later. And I crawled into bed. And then wouldn't you know it, a thought popped in my head of a conversation. And I was like, gosh, darn it. I was so mad. I just wanted to go to bed. And I had to get my phone and open it up and just start like, okay, let me just write this down. And like, you know, your thumbs are trying to keep up. And I'm like, okay, I've got the thought. And then like the phone falls and hits me on the face. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to bed now. I'm done. I've got it written. Thank you for smacking me in the face phone. Good night. And I, I find that it works best for me when like everything else is just not there, you know, when the rest of the world is dark, the rest of the world is just not in the world. Um, that, that is the time for me. Yeah. Because if the rest of the world is, if the rest of the world is messy <laughs> or the rest of the world has stuff that I have to attend to, then I, then I do that instead. And I, I need to be able to, I need to be able to turn everything else off. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, um, I have got, I, I, I wrote my dissertation at a coffee shop. Um, I, I mean, really, I wrote, uh, most of it at Starbucks, a little bit at Panera because I left the town where Starbucks was. And so I, I, coffee shops were really good for me because they forced me to focus on what was right in front of me and not somewhere else. I, I couldn't, but I also, um, libraries are good because, and that's actually why I ended up starting my, um, book in a library mm -hmm. because I, um, I actually ended up starting writing the book in a library. 
um, I started when when I started NanoRimo. I start I started NanoRimo in a library. I went to yeah. a NanoRimo event in a library, and so I'm like I'm sitting in a library. I might as well write about being in a library. Um, and what am I going to say? I'm in a library. Okay. I, uh, there's a, I, and I started just writing a scene about wandering through the Dewey Decimal System. And that led to finding something in the, a book. I, I had no idea where I was going with it. I did not know what I was going to write about. And that's what came out um and so it was it it was really interesting that that's where it landed um yeah but that that part of the novel actually was what i wrote on the first day of NaNoWriMo was the the scene of the dewey De her walking through the dewey decimal system <laughs> looking for something I love the endless potential and possibilities that writing allows us. Yeah. 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 Um, I was going to take a look at my sheet here and I, I always love it when our conversation like naturally just covers a lot of this stuff, but I was going to take a quick peek. Um, while I'm looking over my questions, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about in particular about writing and um, just, wow, we really covered a lot of this. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like this has been a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. Um, would you say that you, use your writing to also help you process you said in your yeah. or in your in your writer's bio that i read for everybody that you're a survivor of cancer and mental health and so i was wondering if you could speak to that a bit about how mm -hmm. writing has helped you to uh, just process the stuff that you've had to deal with in life yeah um i i am i I am constantly processing, well, I'm constantly processing everything. Um, and I, I am an eight year survivor of breast cancer. Um, and those things are huge in uh, dealing with that has been huge in my, um, well, it's, that's huge. I, am yeah still processing how I manage to live while so many other people don't. Um, it's interesting. Um, the play that we just did, we dedicated it to a woman who, um, who actually did not survive breast cancer, who was one of my professors who I worked with for seven years, who was an amazing, amazing person. And, um, she was, um, she worked with me in the camp when I first started out and, um, she, we named a dragon after her <laughs> because mm. she, um, was the head of stone dragon house. And so the, the play was dedicated to her and my son stood up and read the dedication and it, it was just really incredibly powerful to be able to, um, to say those things out loud. Um, and uh, like I said, I know where the story is going and I know that some of those things are going to come into the story later on because, um, my character is going to have to deal with some of the things that I dealt with. Mm -hmm. Um, and so many people deal with cancer. One in eight women. That's a lot of people. Uh, that, that's just a lot of people. Yeah. 
when, when I got sick, I said that I wasn't done. I had a four-year-old um, at the time when I first got sick. I wasn't done with this life. And I still am not done with this life. But I don't know exactly what I am doing. <laughs> but do any of us? Mm. Good point. Do any of us. I spent my last year in that coaching program trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing with my life. And that's what led me to create Life Beyond Parenting. But in this very first book, um, this very first book, uh, my character deals with suicidal thoughts. And she deals with suicidal thoughts that I had when I was in middle school. But she also ends up meeting me. Um, if I could go back and meet myself in middle school, what would I say to myself? I mean, when I was in middle school, I didn't think I deserved to live. And my kid sometimes thinks he doesn't deserve to live. I have sat up with him through suicidal thoughts this year. I have sat with him through his friends being suicidal this year. And I know that there are a lot of other kids just like him. And so that's, that is why I have this semicolon on my wrist because my story is not over. That's why we have the semicolon at the very beginning of the story because the story's not over yet. It's only just begun. And it's heavy stuff for a middle grade book. It is, but middle grade kids are dealing with heavy stuff. And um, in fact, I would love to read a very, very small portion when Iris talks to Phoebe. Phoebe is the phoenix. I'm giving spoilers here. When Iris talks to Phoebe, Phoebe says, there are people who need your light in the darkness, Iris. People who can't breathe. The darkness has gotten worse in so many ways with racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia and people hating people for no reason and many reasons and all the reasons that they don't even know how to put into words. All the isms weigh down on us and crush us until it's nearly impossible to find a way through the ashes and soot. But once you've come through the worst of the worst, once you've been through the fire, that's where you'll find her. The person you've been waiting all along to be. That is so beautiful. There's a lot of really good in this world. I, I am so, it sounds silly. I don't know why to say the word proud, like, but I am like, I'm just so proud and grateful that you found the courage to write about these really difficult subjects because you're giving voice to other people people who may be too afraid to speak these things out loud and so they keep it inside them they keep the guck inside them and so they can't see the hope on the other side and by being able to talk about these things by being able to help them find their voice and express what it is that they're feeling they can get it out and then hopefully see what's on the other side so you're doing very important work 
the world is so lucky to have you in it because the world needs more people like you. I think the world needs, I, I think, I think so. <laughs> I think the world needs all of the people that are willing to speak their truth. And um, I am excited to be one of them. Yeah. And I, and I am inspired to continue. And I'm inspired to continue. And I am inspired by you writing your truth. And I'm inspired by you writing your truth. So thank you. And Mr. Fuzzy Pants, come here. He is going to be in the next story. <laughs> He's, He's going to be in the catastrophe. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to be on screen. <laughs> that is an awesome cat. <laughs> he really is. Ah. Um, <laughs> well, that is. And that is an immensely important message to get out at the end of our episode. I always conclude with two specific questions, though. So what are some of your favorite books? And what are some of your son's favorite books that you guys have read together, or even when he was little, just the ones mm. that really stand out to you? So many. Let's see. My favorite books. How do I choose? That is such a big question. That's why I said books. <laughs> doesn't have to be one. Such a big question. We have on our stairs, the book stairs. Oh. Our, our set of stairs is made, a, we've made it into books. And we, we, drew lots in our house to decide which books would be included. And only one has changed. Guess which one? Oh. Yeah. Sadly. We had to change one since we moved in. That was hard. Um, I would say my favorite book from when I was a child is The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. Oh. What's it about? It is a mystery. It is a fascinating book about a person who has died and left their will for a group of people to figure out it is a very weird book. I love it. <laughs> the, the Westing Game. I recommend it greatly. Very okay. weird book. And very wonderful. Okay. I also love the Chronicles of Narnia. Oh. Narnia was my personal fantasy world that I was allowed as a child. Um, and the Wizard of Oz books. All mm. Oz. Uh, in fact, Oz comes into my world. Um, Oz is the first fantasy world that Iris goes to. It is the first book that she goes into. Wow. Helps that it's public domain. Um, yeah. But I actually have been to the magical land of Oz in North Carolina. I don't know if you know that there is actually an Oz theme park in North Carolina. It's amazing. Anyway. Um, so want to go. I, I could talk Oz all day. I did my dissertation about Wicked. That's a whole other story. <laughs> so quick side note, um, I was obsessed with the Wizard of Oz movie when I was a little girl. And I remember getting some red flat shoes and I just kept skipping around our living room coffee table over and over and over again to practice skipping down the yellow brick road and I would sing that song. And of course the Scarecrow's version as well. But you can just, actually I... go 
to a place where there is an actual yellow brick road in North Carolina. I would love that. It's crazy. Okay. So anyway, I'll send, I'll send you an email and show you where it is. It's crazy. Amazing. All right. Thank you. So vacation. So, my son's favorite books. He absolutely loves the Percy Jackson books. Oh, um, let's see what else he's right now as we speak watching twilight but i think that's a guilty pleasure and uh, i think it's more <laughs> the watching than the um um i don't think he's ever read them mm. and like i said i don't know that he would want anyone to know that uh, <laughs> um let's see what else what other books does he love i just read the first percy jackson to my seven-year-old and I have an audio interview that I did with him that I totally want to figure out, like, how to get the audio up. Because uh, when I first read it, he, like, especially where he's trying to get to Camp Half-Blood and, you know, the uh, demon that pops up in the museum at the beginning of the book. And my little seven-year-old, I totally forgot how intense that book was. And he was just like, I am so nervous right now. I am freaking out. And I was like, do you want me to stop reading? And he was like, no, what happens? And I was like, I am so sorry. And then like two days later, I was like, maybe we can come back to Percy Jackson in a year or two. And he was like, keep reading the book. And then when I finished the book, he was like, why did you do that to me? And I was like, okay, so you, you don't want to read those books. And he was like, I want to read all five tomorrow. <laughs> right now. I need to know. And every cool. time he's like, I need to know. I'm freaking out. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, Ari listened to them on audio, but listened to them over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like it was just like constant diet of Audible, uh, and and the Kane Chronicles and the um uh, didn't do the mag doesn't really like Norse didn't do the Magnus Chase ones, but over and over and over and over again. <sighs> what are the Magnus Chase ones you said? What was that? Magnus Chase is Norse mythology. Oh. Um, but, um, and now there's Arusha and all of the, um, all of the Rick Riordan Presents series has, oh, wow. has like um, all of these extended mythologies um, that he's um, contracted with other um, authors of other um races as yes. well which is really interesting yeah um so i i have read all of them uh, i i've wanted to but i just don't have the brain power <laughs> um but well, that was a lot of really great books the any other book that popped in your mind was um, telling you about my child freaking out <laughs> i'm trying to think of what else would be his favorite favorites for you um his favorite his other favorite would be nightmare before christmas oh yeah the book and the movie he actually loves the book oh he, he has old. he has the book signed by chris sarandon who played the um the jack skellington yeah yeah, yeah. Um, because my that's my child my, my, my child goes to Comic-Con and gets Chris Sarandon to sign the book. That's amazing. No, I love that. My seven-year-old oh. fell in love with The Nightmare Before Christmas uh, this, this past Christmas. And I kept, like, wanting and waiting to show it to him. And I tried another year, and he was just kind of like, what is this? I don't – what? And then – and then last year I put it on and it was like, I put it on for me. This is my TV time. So like, go play. Like you, you don't have to watch this. And then he was just like, what's happening? And he was, he's been hooked ever since. So my, my, my child has been watching it since he was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, um, I get my kids a Christmas ornament every year that kind of like represents something that they fell in love with. And so this year it was a Jack Skellington sitting on a Christmas present and he was so excited. He was like, oh, 
<laughs> my four-year-old got a Paw Patrol ornament, <laughs> per usual. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that concludes our show. But thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us and just absolutely and if anyone is in the massachusetts or rhode island area we still have space in camp next week so oh, look at, there you go. imagine the key you could come be part of our magical world so much fun <laughs> but yeah have a wonderful evening Oh, thank you too. Oh, and um, all of your social media links are in the description so everybody yep. can connect with you and follow those and stay in touch and follow your story so we can get book yes. two. <laughs> <coughs> the catastrophe should be coming by Christmas. And right. that's the theory. <laughs> yeah, keep us posted. Absolutely. So I'll talk to you soon. Okay, you take care. Have a good night. Thank you again. Bye.